Welcome to the lecture on analysis of forging process. So, we discussed about the introduction of forging processes and uh, in that we discussed about the open die forging, closed die forging, then different type of forging processes, uh, different equipments which are used in uh, forging that is hammers or press. So, what we have uh, understood by forging process is that you have uh, the die, lower die is there which is normally fixed and you have the top die which is normally uh, going in the downward direction. It comes in contact with the uh, work piece and then uh, it tries to compress it. So, what happens that in this case normally uh, there will be uh, frictional forces also acting and uh, then once it uh, uh, presses the uh, object in between the dies, then the stresses are developed. So, the purpose is to uh, compute these stresses or forces and uh, you will be given the dimensions of the job, you will be given the pressure by which you are applying and based on that you need to uh, find uh, what are basically the stresses, uh, how to calculate the load. So, that can be you know found out. So, what is uh, being done in the case of, uh, so we need to find the forging forces. So, if you look at the schematic of the forging process, what we see is that you have basically a top die and uh, uh, you have uh, one uh, bottom die which is normally fixed. So, this will be the uh, bottom die and this will be top die which will be moving and uh, there is one element which is there uh, and this element needs to be forged. So, what happens that when you apply the pressure in that case the stresses will be developed and uh, the material basically uh, flattens this way and uh, here uh, we assume that the thickness is uniform throughout the material and uh, uh, for that we have to assume one element suppose so this. So, suppose what we do is so what we see that you have you have overhanging two flattens this will be top flatten this will be bottom flatten that is uh, fixed and then this is the work piece uh, which is basically. So, you are applying the pressure from this side and certainly the pressure will be also applied from this side. So, what happens because of that you will have the application of pressure on this element. Now, what we do is uh, you assume that this is x direction. So, suppose we take this as x direction. So, you take this distance as x and we take a strip of d x uh, this uh, this is the d x. Now, what happens that once you apply the load now under that load uh, on the surface you have shearing stresses acting. Now, in this case what we see is you have p acting here. Uh, so, you are uh, acting P here and uh, basically the shear stress is acting and uh, uh, you know from for that uh, uh, because of the movement there will be frictional forces acting. Now, the direction of the frictional force will be depending upon the position where it is. So, it will be normally towards the middle plane of the uh, the element or, or the whole work piece. So, in this case if you look at the uh, direction of the frictional force will be in this direction because the middle uh, portion is here. So, this part will be uh, tend to move. So, half of the portion in this side they will try to move in this fashion and if the element is on this side then that element will try. So, in on that 
there are frictional forces because their movement will be in this side. So, frictional forces will move in this direction here. Similarly, in, in the element on this side will try to move in this fashion because of the force applied. So, the frictional force will apply in that opposite direction. So, in this direction in at this place the friction force will be acting in that direction. So, if you try to find the free body diagram in this case. So, what we see is you have application of pressure P uh, here from both the sides and then you have frictional forces acting here uh, that is uh, uh, frictional force. So, that will be uh, depending upon the position that we will discuss uh, later and then uh, what happens that since it is at x. So, there will be st stress acting uh, that will be sigma x here and then stress acting at the distance x plus uh, dx you can take it at, at this point as sigma x plus d sigma x. So, what we see is you have x so, that is sigma x and then here you have sigma x plus d sigma x. Now, uh, that is what uh, the basically uh, free body diagram is and you have the uh, shear stresses acting here. So, that will be tau this side and tau this side also. So, you have tau on this uh, surfaces acting towards the uh, positive x direction because the element is taken uh, in the left half uh, from the center plane. So, now in this uh, case uh, you have to uh, assume certain things uh, like uh, uh, you have to assume that the forging force will attain the maximum value at the end of the forging process. Similarly, uh, you have to assume that the coefficient of friction between the uh, metal material and the die is assumed to be constant. Uh, so, as the time progresses, uh, then uh, you have to assume that the thickness is very small. So, that is why uh, the variation in st of stress in the uh, in that perpendicular direction will be negligible. So, that is another uh, assumption in that case. Uh, so, also you have to find that the length of the strip is quite more than its width. So, in this case basically uh, for the dimension given the whole dimension here this is taken as total as 2 L. So, you, you have to do up to L and from both the sides once you get you can find the total forging load. Now, what you see is that if you are basically you are taking this is the width basically and you are taking the uh, length as unity. So, in this case your whole width is 2 L and length is taken as unity in that case. So, that remains. Uh, so, so, we will find the force per unit length in fact. Now, and this uh, uh, thickness or height you can have that as H. Now, uh, you have to do the force analysis. So, if you try to the, do the force analysis what you see is now here this is h. So, h and multiplied by uh, unity. So, you, if you look at that if you do the force analysis in the x direction what you see is sigma x plus d sigma x into h. So, if you do for per unit length, so area becomes h into 1 and then minus sigma x into h and then it will be plus 2 tau into dx. So, this is the dx length. So, you have tau plus tau that is 2 tau into dx and that should be equal to 0. So, if you do the force analysis equilibrium uh, force uh, equilibrium analysis in the x direction uh, you get this equation. So, if you do that this term will cancel you get h into d sigma x plus 2 tau uh, d x will be equal to 0. So, this is what uh, uh, you get 
from this force balance equation in the x direction. Uh, okay. So, you get the uh, expression that is uh, uh, h into d sigma x plus 2 tau uh, d x. Okay. Now, further what we see is that uh, you have you can consider this sigma x and p we are if you consider them at sigma x and p as the principal stresses. So, in that case you can apply the conditions of yielding and you can have the relationship between these two uh, forces sigma x and p. So, if you consider them as principal stresses that way you can have the correlationship. So, what we get? So, once uh, you assume the p and sigma x so as the principal stresses in that case you can apply the uh, condition of uh, yielding and you can find that uh, if so you can write if sigma x and p are assumed as principal stresses. So, using conditions of yielding you can write sigma x and minus of minus p. So, plus p will be 2 k. So, p is compressive in nature. So, that is why you have taken minus p. So, minus of minus p that will be 2 k. So, from this expression uh, you can have uh, the uh, finding here. So, sigma x plus p it will be 2 k. So, what we get is uh, you can get d sigma x equal to minus d p. So, because k is constant, so d sigma x will be basically uh, minus d p. So, further you apply uh, this d sigma x here in, in, in place of that you can have minus d p. So, what you get h d p will be equal to 2 tau d x. Now, that is uh, so what you get is d p will be 2 tau by h d x. This is the expression for d p. Now, what we have to do is you have to assume that where we are basically studying where we are doing the analysis. So, what we discussed is that we are doing the analysis between here up to the midpoint. So, up to the midpoint you have two regions, there can be two regions considered. One will be now the thing is that for deformation to occur there has to be relative motion, so there has to be sliding and the sliding will occur up to certain distance and then uh, after certain distance that uh, uh, sliding will be uh, stopped. So, you will have the sticking zone. So, you have two zones, you can specify two zones. Uh, one zone is uh, for the sliding zone, another zone is the sticking zone. Now, in that case, uh, what you can see that from here to certain distance. So, if you take the two zones 0 to x s, so you will have this as the 2 L. So, if you take this length as L. So, in that we assume that there is uh, in this zone from x equal to 0 to x equal to x s there is sliding occurs and then in this is the zone from x equal to x s to x equal to L. So, this will be your sliding zone and this will be your sticking zone. Now, we have to do the analysis uh, in this uh, uh, zone uh, because uh, when the x is small the sliding and so for the small value of x sliding has to be incorporated and uh, uh, so that the required expansion takes place in the material and once we go beyond the certain value of x in that case. So, once we go above this value then basically 
uh, in that case that zone is the sticking zone. So, basically there will be no sliding uh, because of increasing frictional stresses. So, at that po point what happens that the that uh, value reaches the shear yield stress value. So, that time the maximum uh, shear stress that is frictional stress which is achieved that becomes equal to the shear yield stress. So, that this is the uh, these are the two zones. So, we are going to consider these two zones and, and accordingly you will have the pressure variation calculated uh, according to this expression in these two zones. Now, coming to the first zone uh, the sliding zone. Now, what will happen in the sliding zone? So, in the sliding zone basically this tau can be taken as mu times p. Okay? So, coming to the zone where x is uh, from 0 to x s. So, so, 0 to x s once we are do in, in this zone uh, then this is the zone where the there is sliding. Now, in this zone uh, you can take the tau as mu d p. So, if you take that uh, it will be d p equal to mu p basically tau will be mu into p. So, it will be tau equal to mu p. So, it will be d, d p equal to 2 mu p divided by h into d x that is what we get from here tau will be mu p. So, that is what we get. Now, we can further write d p by p equal to 2 mu by h into d x. So, uh, you can write from here if you integrate it will be uh, ln p will be 2 mu x by h plus constant. So, there is a constant of integration that is c 1. Now, this constant of integration can be found by using the boundary condition values. So, this c 1 can be found out. So, using boundary condition at x equal to 0 basically sigma x is 0. So, uh, the this from this expression sigma x plus p equal to 2 k at x equal to 0 at this point since sigma x is 0. So, p will be 2 k. So, you will have p as 2 k. So, you can have uh, so, your C 1 becomes L n 2 k. So, what we get is uh, L n p equal to 2 mu x by h plus L n 2 k. So, this L n 2 k will come this side. So, L n of p by 2 k will be equal to 2 mu x by h this we can further write p by 2 k will be equal to exponential 2 mu x by h. So, p will be equal to 2 mu 2 k multiplied by e raised to the power 2 mu x by h. So, this is the expression for the pressure uh, expression uh, for and this zone that is this zone is known as the sliding zone. So, this will be varying uh, from 0 to x s. Now, we will move to the next zone that is your uh, sticking zone. Now, in the case of sticking zone what happens? So, in the case of sticking zone if you move to sticking zone now, your x will be varying from x s to l. So, in this case you can have uh, the um, so here uh, what will happen you can have uh, tau as mu p s. So, in that case the shear 
uh, strength value reaches the uh, value of k, so you have tau as mu of p s. So, suppose p becomes p s in that case, so that will be reaching to the value of k. Now, in that case, uh, you will have to further use this formula. So, here it will be uh, d p will be now you can find in terms of uh, so d p will be uh, 2 tau by h and uh, d x. So, it will be uh, tau is k, so it will be 2 k by h d x. So, you will get d p as 2 2 tau by h d x it is. So, this will be equal to 2 into k by h d x. So, if you can further uh, integrate it, it will be p equal to 2 k by h x plus c 2. Now, you have to find the uh, constant value of c 2. Now, for that what we see is uh, for finding the value of c 2, now at x equal to basically x s p becomes p s. So, we have assumed that x equal to, so at x equal to x s p becomes p s. So, in that case you can find the c 2, so c 2 will be So, this will be p s minus 2 k by h into x s. So, you can further write your expression becomes like this p will be equal to 2 k by h into x plus p s minus 2 k by h into x s that is p s plus 2 k by h into x minus x s. So, your expression becomes equal to uh, p equal to, uh, so you can have the s this side and your expression will become p minus p s will be equal to 2 k by h x minus x s. So, this is what you get uh, from there. Now, uh, for finding the p s, you got this p uh, as the expression here. So, you can find the p s value from this expression, because this expression is valid up to the x equal to x s. So, you can have p s value. Now, p s will be equal to p s you can calculate by putting the x equal to x s here in this expression. So, p s will be 2 k into e raise to the power 2 mu x s by h. So, you will get uh, this expression p s equal to uh, 2 k e raise to the power 2 mu x s by h. So, you can further write p equal to p s plus this. So, you will have 2 k e raised to the power 2 mu x s by h plus 2 k by h x minus x s. So, you can have the 2 k common and then you will have e raised to the power 2 mu x s by h plus x minus x s by h. This is the expression you get uh, for the uh, reason here in that uh, second one you get p equal to 2 k and e raised to the power uh, 2 mu x s by h plus x minus x s by h. So, from there now uh, at x equal to x s basically we have got uh, the p as p s. So, tau is basically mu, mu p s at x equal to x s we have found 
the tau as mu p s that is equal to k. So, what you see is the p s will be basically 2 k times and then e raised to the power 2 mu excess by h. So, that is what uh, we got. Now, uh, again the this uh, mu p s equal to k from there you can uh, find the uh, other values. So, you will have now if you look at this from here now in that mu p s is k. So, basically uh, you can have in the place of p s you can have k by mu you can write. So, if you write here in this case now p s as you can be written as k by mu as equal to 2 k into e raised to the power 2 mu excess by h. So, what you see is again further it will be going away uh, what you get is 1 by 2 mu. So, you get 1 by 2 mu equal to e raised to the power 2 mu excess by h. It means 2 mu excess by h will be equal to ln of 1 by 2 mu. So, 2 mu excess by h will be equal to ln of 1 by 2 mu. This is what you also get from here. You get this from this you can have uh, the p s. So, from this expression you are getting k by mu p s will be k by mu. So, p s will be p s will be k by mu uh, and that will be equal to this. So, from here you get this and you get 2 mu excess by h it will be equal to uh, ln 1 by 2 mu. From here you get excess as excess will be taken as h by 2 mu and ln of 1 by 2 mu. So, excess is basically taken as h by 2 mu into ln of 2 mu. Now, this excess is to be substituted. So, we reached first here. So, we got uh, first here then we got this as here. Now, from here we will further move and we will find the expression. Now, we have got the expression p equal to 2 k into 2 e to the power 2 mu excess by h plus x minus excess by h. Now, in that we will substitute the expression for x s. So, p we can find as 2 k into e raised to the power 2 mu excess by h. So, e raised to the power 2 mu into x s, x s is h by 2 mu ln 1 by 2 mu. So, uh, h by 2 mu and ln uh, it is 1 by 2 mu. So, it is 2 mu x s upon h. So, h will come here in the bottom. So, this way you will have these terminologies cutting up uh, that we will do it later on plus x minus x s by h. So, x minus again x s value we will put in h by 2 mu ln 1 by 2 mu h by 2 mu and ln 1 by 2 mu. So, x minus x s divided by uh, h. So, this is what you get. So, this can be further simplified 2 k will be here and if you look at this 2 will cancel mu will cancel h will cancel. So, e raised to the power ln 1 by 2 mu that becomes 1 by 2 mu plus uh, then you have x by h then you have h by 2 mu by h. So, it will be 1 by 2 mu minus 1 by 2 mu ln 1 by 2 mu. So, uh, altogether you get 2 k into uh, x by h plus 1 by 2 mu into 1 minus ln 1 by 2 mu.
So, this is what the expression is. So, this becomes P as equal to 2 k into this. Now, you got the, so this is the uh, number 2. So, you have got pressure, uh, this term uh, expression as, so this will be uh, 2 k into x by h plus 1 by 2 mu and uh, uh, plus uh, uh, x by h plus. Now, you can find the force per unit length, if the total force per unit length is to be calculated. So, total forging force per unit length, per unit length if you look at, it will be basically P dx. So, uh, P is there and then dx you have to calculate from. So, this, so it will be uh, 2 times P 1 dx. So, P 1 is nothing but here. So, in this dx and this for this the x is varying from 0 to x s up to this zone. So, it will be varying from 0 to x s. Similarly, P 2 dx integral and for this the integral will vary from x s to L. So, this will be x s to L. So, this will tell you the total forging load. So, this way you calculate the total forging force per unit length considering this sliding and sticking friction uh, for such cases. So, you can uh, do the analysis once more and get the confidence how to calculate these values. So, basically you will be given these uh, values like you will have the uh, these dimensions known and once you know the uh, point where you have to calculate you have all these values known. So, for a given dimension of uh, product you can find these values. Thank you very much.